Who lives with whom and why? These are the central questions of ecological community analysis. This is the first part of a three-part series on the big three challenges that come with that quest. Three hard problems that are not easily addressed by standard statistical methods. Part 1. The Dust Bunny Distribution when we collect ecological community data, we record species presence or abundance in sample units. For example, plots, sites, and so on. If we sample a number of sites, we record the communities in a data matrix. Sample units are rows, and species are columns, and each cell represents the abundance of a species in a sample unit. Imagine we have recorded the abundance of a single species at sites along an environmental gradient. For example, we could measure the cover of a plant species along a moisture gradient. The species abundance rises to its optimum along that gradient, then falls to zero. Real data might look like this. Even at a species optimum, it often has lower abundance than its potential, or even a zero. This is because of the action of other factors, measured or not, including disturbance and establishment history. If we graphed all of the species on a gradient, it would look something like this. Lettered lines represent different species. If we sample the community at a given point, we are recording the abundance of each species at that point. That slide represented species distributions in environmental space, but we often analyze the data by studying the sample units as points in species space. What is species space? Each sample unit defines a point in a high dimensional species space, where each axis represents the abundance of a particular species. Points that are close in species space are very similar communities, while points far apart have different communities. The sample is a collection of those points and it looks like this. We use these data to answer questions about how communities differ from each other and why. A community sample in species space is very different from the sample distribution expected by traditional parametric statistical models, the multivariate normal distribution. The points occupy an ellipsoid, diminishing in density toward the edges. This is what a real dust bunny looks like. You've seen them. They accumulate in the corners and edges of the spaces that we live in. Even the simplest community data set will form a dust bunny. For example, a single gradient transitioning from species 1 to 2 to 3. Each point represents the abundance of a species at a point on the gradient. The upper graph shows a transition from species 1 to species 2 to species 3 along an environmental gradient. If we sample along that gradient, the data points lie along the edges of the space, and the gradient is folded and curved in species space. The dust bunny happens because sample units tend to lie along the edges and in the corners of species space. This means that zeros are the most common value in a community matrix. Here is a model of a dust bunny in a three-dimensional species space, with the ribbon showing the path of the environmental gradient through the species space. This is a big challenge for the widely used linear models, such as principal components analysis and principal coordinates analysis. They try to capture the gradient by skewering the distribution with straight lines. Even though there is one simple gradient in this space, you can see that it is impossible to capture it with a single straight line. Fortunately, there are some remedies. In particular, ecologists who are aware of the problems of linear models with community data often favor data summarization methods, 
especially non-metric multidimensional scaling, that do not require the multivariate normal distribution. Many people still try to force the data into a linear mold with the result that it is harder to recover simple patterns from the data.